We have a special guest this week. It is Andy from CSG. He's been grading for well over 20 years. I'm super excited to have him on the show because when I was researching the book, you know, I read a lot of his articles online and also took a look at a lot of his different old social media posts comparing fake cards to some of the real ones. So as soon as he emailed me a few weeks ago talking about the book, I was super excited to bring him on. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's my 23rd year of professional card grading. Uh, I started uh, at the end of 1999, actually with Beckett for 16 years as a senior vintage grader. Two years now, uh, I joined Certified Collectibles Group and uh, we started CSG. Now, what got you into grading initially? Did you decide like early on, I'm going to be a grader or did you see like an advertisement became a grader? How did you end up getting into the industry? Well, you know, I started doing shows uh, when I was 12. Date me, that would have been in the late 80s, 88, 89, that uh, I, was, I was doing shows on weekends and uh, definitely a different market then. And, uh, you know, traveling to some of the uh, uh, flea markets and, and card shows around, I was buying collections and flipped an ad in the paper with a friend that we were buying collections. You know, I was at a, uh, at a trade days in, in Alabama and uh, a, a, an elderly woman had, you know, what, what everybody talks about. She, she set up the flea market and had a shoe box full of cards. You know, I've always been drawn to the vintage cards. Uh, I've, I pretty much shifted most of my focus when I was 13 to pre-war baseball. Long story short, in that shoe box were some 1938 uh, Gowdy uh, Heads Up, which is the, the cartoon bodies drawn by Al Damari. You know, they were great. And I got them home and I got out my almanac and I'm looking them up, trying to find some information on them. And, you know, even even uh, in the late 80s, these were some valuable cards. And so I started really studying them and looking at them close. And then I started to realize something was off. Something was definitely uh, not right about them. They were really from 1938. And then sure enough, one of the cards had reprint on the back bottom and most of it had been scraped off. And so there was just a small portion. So that really, uh, that jump started my, my desire to learn about cards and, and learn, you know, more than collecting, but how are they made and, and how are they counterfeited? Why are they counterfeited? Um, and, you know, alterations really wasn't something at the time that I knew anything about, but uh, I, I definitely learned uh, what a counterfeit card is and uh, people definitely were, were passing along, uh, whether knowingly or unknowing. Man, I can't imagine eighties and nineties knowing all the different things between fakes, reels, and all the alterations. And I'm lucky I had the internet where I had all the different resources, but back then probably just had to grab a lot of information from dealers who've been in it forever. Yeah. You know, hands-on and, and to this day, you know, I, I still talk about one of the best educations that you can, you can, uh, give yourself is just handling cards, you know? Uh, yeah, you, you know, you don't, you're not going to get to handle a T206 Wagner most likely, but you know what? All the other cards in T206 set were printed the same at the exact same place in Manhattan, uh, printed on the same stock with the same ink. So, you know, you, you just looking at $20 T206 commons, uh, knowing what to look for using a loop and then learning how they're made, then you'll be able to detect a, a counterfeit Wagner. And that's the best method you would tell people today. Use a loop, know the touch and everything like that black light test anything else that people could do at a card show don't go to as many card shows as uh, uh, for for fun as I, i'd like to i do get to go to a few most of them obviously are for work um but you know i always carry a loop with me and um you know the lighting's not the best in the world at the shows there's some great loop led lights built into them but you know at very minimum take a loop with you and uh you know your the experience that you've already got from handling cards and looking at cards at home through a loop and and understanding the cards you know you really <clears throat> just a good loop and you know most dealers get it you're buying raw cards, you know, you want to put a loop, take a look at it. They understand. And, and, you know, frankly, if a dealer doesn't allow it or has a problem with it, that might be a red flag. It definitely is. It's like those dealers that say, you can't take pictures of my cards or post them online. It's like, why is that the case? I don't know if you've seen that. Some of the shows recently. Now there's dealers that have signs that says, do not take photos of my cards. Do not take video. I don't want to be anywhere online. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure there's, there's other reasons. I can understand, you know, some, some, some dealers that deal in high end uh, uh, vintage and whatnot. I could, I could, I could see that, but yeah, that's a, that's a kind of a new trend that I've noticed here lately. Speaking of new trends, what have you learned mostly of the last 20 plus years? What has been changing on the counterfeit side of things? I've gotten better. Um, not as a whole. But uh, we definitely are seeing um, certain types of counterfeits that that um, that are close, and, and the technology's gotten better. The technology's gotten gotten cheaper, uh, which allows more people to dabble in in something like counterfeiting. Uh, the flip side is because technology has gotten cheaper and more available. Uh, you know, you don't have to be a, a, a printing. I have a printing press and a print shop to to try to counterfeit cards. People do them at home, so. Uh, another trend is we've seen a very large increase in the number of counterfeits, but fortunately, uh, the majority are homemade, you know, whether on a, a, 
a computer printer or something to that effect. So they're, they're easy to detect. We've definitely seen a large increase in those types. Uh, and, and really in the last seven, five to seven years has really been an explosion of these, what I call these, these homemade counterfeit. Yeah. Especially those Etsy ones that you see at the shows and they're so, they're so bad. The surface is on them, but like, if you look at them online, they can appear pretty good. But as soon as you pull them out of a sleeve or see them in person, you know that they're fake. One thing that I know we talked a little bit off camera about was some of the different Chrome fakes that are out there. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? What you've been seeing coming forward on the Chromes? Yeah, you know, as far as for the modern, um, you know, counterfeiting trends, um, you know, they run the gamut from from autograph cards, uh, you know, pack pulled autograph cards to, you know, we're even seeing, like you mentioned, some Chrome uh, cards that are counterfeit and a lot of the uh, 90s basketball inserts. We've seen a lot of those coming from overseas that are really close, even like Bowman Chrome. We, we've we've seen uh, fakes of those. Fortunately, they're they're uh, you know they're they're still a little off on the technology. They can't quite get uh, get what tops have done uh, get it down right. But uh, you know some of them that we've seen, if, if they're sold uh, online and, and there's an image of that that actual card, it's, it's it would some of those would be really tough to tell. You wouldn't know until you got them in hand or that they were failed through the um, eBay authentication program. Now with those Bowman Chrome ones, are they trying to make fake like refractors or like other parallel cards? Or are they going after autograph cards or just plain base ones, like a first Bowman Chrome of like a Vlad Guerrero or a Tatis? Yeah, we've seen some base ones. Um, I've seen some some autograph ones. The refractors that we've seen so far are, 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 are not. The refractor uh, foil itself is not great, but the, but the, the base Chromes that we've seen in some of these autographs, they're a lot closer because they don't have the ref, the uh, fake refractor uh, foil on them. And with, with the authentication program on eBay, do you have like maybe like a top five cards that are being fake that you guys are stopping right now? Or like maybe numbers also, how many cards that you guys are stopping on a daily? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We were talking about that, my senior uh, modern grader this week about, you know, what kind of trends are we seeing? And it's interesting because there's not really even five of the same cars that we see over and over. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a multitude of different types. Vintage today, uh, for some reason, had multiple 33 Gaudi fake. And, and one wasn't uh, your typical easy to detect garbage fake. It was actually a decent one. From the modern, of course, you know, we, we, we do see Jordan rookies, a couple of dozen different versions that we catalog that of uh, fakes. So we've seen multiples of those types. You know, it's not really a Romery reason to it it seems like uh it's just it's a mix between modern and vintage and then you know we are seeing more of the uh, fantasy cards what i call cinderella cards that never actually existed and not and not all vintage you know traditionally for years you'd see these um these cards that look like a lot of them will try to look emulate e cards from the early 20s and, and even t cards from the teens that just never they're not fake they just never actually existed and we're seeing that on the modern side. I've seen um, I've seen several, or at least two now, two versions of a fantasy card of, of Gretzky that you know supposedly are are from his rookie year that just never existed. They're just fantasy cards, and so we we've definitely been seeing an uptick in those through eBay. What's the design of those fantasy cards of the Gretzky? I'm I'm interested now. It was weird. They were they were just it was like a black and white card, and it was a a full bleed white background. It was really a really lazy design. But uh, you know, one of them it said something about for promotional use only. You know, on the back, not for sale. <laughs> they they're pretty shoddy. With, with so much new blood in 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 the industry in the last couple three years now. You know, I, it, 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 I see things that it's history's repeating itself. You know, I'm getting asked the same kind of questions I, I got 20 years ago. People when, when grading, not grading wasn't new in 20 years ago, but it was still fairly new when people are learning about it. But, you know, with these fantasy cards, sometimes it's just too good of a deal. Hey, it's a Gretzky and it's and it's from his rookie year. So it's it's worth the, you know, five hundred dollars or whatever they, they're, they're getting. And, um, you know, only to find out later is just a fantasy card. So, you know, there's always that. uh that uh, too good to resist that that possible hidden treasure that everybody's going to miss but you and you know spoiler alert on, on the internet you you probably are not the first to find that do you still see some of those frankenstein cards where people use a, a real tito six front and back but make different combinations that never existed do some of those still pass through or yeah you know you'll see those um you'll see those every once in a while not as much as you used to you know the though what's happened now they're they've gotten more sophisticated and I'm seeing um, T206s that have washed back, and they'll actually print rare backs on onto the back of the card. And and of course, uh, they'll they'll even target cards that are, uh, have album damage, and they're they'll able they'll actually mask off the album damage and print around it. You know, it'll it'll appear that it's a you know broadleaf back or or 
Linux, whatever that, you know, I've seen some of those in all intents and purposes, it looks correct. And Hey, it's got album damage. You know, how would you fake that? But, uh, you know, under proper magnification and, and, uh, the use of some of our other technology, it's, it's, it's really obvious that, uh, you know, these were, these were printed very recently and, and the backs were washed, you know, nine times out of 10, you can instantly just feel that it's, it's not right. It's, it's short or the edges are trimmed or, or whatever. And um, so it's just that muscle memory, you know, the more you see the, the better you are. hundred percent. And I was going to ask too, on like the authentication side of things, you know, you guys set up at quite a few card shows. Do you ever see yourselves envisioning like having a booth where you're doing authenticity directly at a show, maybe not grading per se, but someone sends a card over to you. They're not sure if it's real or fake. And then it goes through the authentication program. Yeah. You know, with the eBay program, it's, 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 it's strictly up to eBay. You know, we perform the authentication service uh, uh, for eBay. Um, but as far as the process and, and, and everything like that, um, that's all through eBay. Uh, it is interesting though, that uh, the feedback that eBay has gotten, you know, eBay's great. They're great to work with. And, um, and, you know, they listen to us and also listen to the, the general public. And, um, you know, two of the, two of the things that they, they've, I know they've heard a lot of is, is, you know, Hey, I'd love to be able to just select and have my card graded before it even leaves authentication. And then another one is, you know, possibly doing something on site. And uh, so it's definitely possible, you know, we grade on site at some shows uh, and uh, you know, that's something that we can do through the grading process, but yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely possible something in the future, you know, even with the eBay on site, on site, it shows. And then also with the authentication process, let's say someone buys a card and it ends up being altered. If the buyer still wants the altered card, is there a way they can still communicate to the seller? Is that going to go all the way straight back to the seller, no matter what on that side of things? Yeah. You know, that, that is one, one kind of tricky area because, you know, me as a pre-war guy, you know, that I've, I've bought altered and trim cards many times because I, I need that card or want that card. And I fully understand the, the, the situation and I pay accordingly. But the problem is, you know, the way eBay looks at it, if it's significantly not as described and if a card was altered and the, it's not in the description, then if, if, it would have to be returned to the seller. And again, you know, it, the buyer may actually want that card if it's an altered state. So it, it's really up to the seller. The seller has to make that determination and say, you know, this, this is an authentic card. However, it appears to be trimmed or I know it's trimmed or I think it's trimmed or whatever the alteration may be. And we see that. We'll see those that'll come through and the grader will see it and go, oh man, this is trimmed. And then we go and, and verify that with the listing says this, you know, beware, this card is trimmed. Perfect. So it goes right through. So, you know, it, uh, honesty, honesty is always the best policy. So, you know, for a seller, be honest about the card and, and uh, sell it and describe it properly. And, and people are still going to buy it, uh, you know, as long as they know what it really is. Yeah. That's the one part I was wondering, because I mean, like with Alan and Ginter, sometimes people would cut off the bottoms in the advertisement. And I know people would still want those cards. Obviously they're a lesser price tag. And I didn't know if those would get hundred percent sent back or if like, a seller would say it, then someone buys it and it goes forward. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a good, uh, a good example of that. Uh, you know, I was trying to think of another off the top of my head. Oh, uh, I saw a, a, a red man. Um, don't remember which year. I think it's either 52 or 53. But regardless, the uh, tab was cut off. Yeah. And so in the auction, it was clearly shown the photo and, and the tab was off. So that was a case where, you know what, it, it, it is obvious in the photo that it has been removed and that would pass through. And, and same with like the OJs, you know, um, something that's very obvious, not really done to deceive. It, it's clear that, you know, uh, what we what we understand is like a lot of times it was the, the moms back in the day, you know, the kids get the cigarette cards and they clip off the cigarette advertisement. Um, so that's something in Xena, it's the same thing with their coupons. That's something that it should pass through unless there's something else uh, going on with it. And same stuff with like rebacking on those OJs as well. Uh, you know, for th that would be considered an alteration, so that would have to be described in the in the uh, in the auction. Yeah. Otherwise, if we if we get an OJ that's skinned and it's not described as that as so in the auction, then we would return that. Well, it's good that you guys are letting people know on that side of things. And one last thing: so, any last minute tips that you give to any collector that might not know? a ton about authenticating cards. Yeah, you know, just a very general basic rule with with cards and, and card, uh, uh, you know, authenticity and, and determining if it's counterfeit or not. You know, I, I, like I said, you know, handle cards, look at them. But when you're looking at them, and this this is true for, for most cards, you know, when you're looking at a card, the photo of the of the player or the subject on the card, you know, will often be made, uh, as modern cards will be made of print dots. And those are those little circles that you see under, under a loop, under magnification. But, you know, most of your, your, your design devices, such as your borders, the 
uh, you know, where the caption is, the name, player name, the team, logos, the, the, the borders around logos, those generally are made up of solid ink uh, in the, from the printing process. So, you know, when you're looking at a thin black border on a card and, and it's not solid black, that's, that's, that's a red flag that, that you, know, you need to look closer uh, and, and find, get you the proper loop for, for card grading. And, and carry it with you. You know, like I said, I've, I've been going to shows since the setting up at shows since the late 80s. I, I, whether I'm for work or play, I have a loop on me, you know, and because when I buy stuff, I, I, I want to look at it. And, uh, you know, the proper loop is the loop that, uh, you know, all the grading standards of the of the of the, uh, the, the major grading companies, the standards are written for 10 power, 10, 10 X as as, you, as you'd see it on the loop. So, you know, you want a 10 power loop, I, I recommend a triplet lens that's corrected for distortion and color uh, and you're off to the races. 